that's pretty nice. Now I'm going to go back and just start toning it. So we'll pretend, uh, and, or we'll make our light source coming from out here. Kind of where, if you see my hand, I'm actually imagining it up high, shining down this way. But I'll, so I'll put the symbol for light up here higher. Kind of keep it diffused. And it's shining up, it's natural artificial, but it's shining down this way on our composition. But again, it's pushed out somewhat more in front. So it's high, it's top high, and it's to the left shining down on our objects. That means that um, our shadows will be to the right of our forms. So I'm going to start toning in our shadows. And I'll just go diagonal on this one. We talked about this in one point, about shading to the vanishing point. Especially when I have areas of depth, I'll do that. Uh, here I'll just shade. I'll shade this one straight across. When I have a flat plane, sometimes I go straight across. Sometimes I go at an angle. Um, but rarely do. Well, I, you don't have a vanishing point, so that's probably the only way I'll do it. I can go straight up and down for visual effect if I want. Through here. Now I have a plane here, so I can I actually have two planes. But I'll give light. I'll give the hatching marks back to this vanishing point. We have the light for that one. So here's the corner of that box. This, these are both parallel, so. I'll just use that parallel line. Notice again how I butt my ruler to the edge. So when you're doing this, when you're shading, you can use like a B. If you're using graphite, nothing too soft or nothing too light. Maybe a B or even an HB is fine. If you're using color pencil, use your black color pencil. <clears throat> okay, so I'll just do this one diagonal. Sometimes it's come more comfortable for my hand to do it diagonal. Here a little bit, tighten that up. So I'll come back down and I'll catch these guys in through here. So I'm thinking about one, two, three step shading. The darkest plane is dark. The medium plane will be kind of the tone of the paper now, just to save time. And the lightest plane will be, will have light on it. So one, two, three step shading. I'll do a lecture, we'll have a lecture on light in forms. And we'll come down, I'll catch, I'll catch this plane in dark, I'll catch this plane in dark, I'll catch this plane. Why? Because the light source is to the left, coming down to here. And I'll come across, I'll catch this one. Shading it back to the vanishing point. Always thinking about when I have depth. Thinking about moving it, feeling that go back in space. And I'm going to tighten this up and shade this back on over. Through here. There we go. And so you, you can now see the illusion start to really take effect. I need to outline this line here because we see through that. See through that space. Okay, I've got a few more boxes to shade. So I'm going to shade this dark, this whole plane here. I need to outline that. Here dark, this plane, this plane dark. But also underneath I'll probably shadow that dark as well. Now, we see through this box. I missed one. Did you catch me? I missed that. So, we see through that. There's a donut hole through there. So, we see through that in our, our drawing. So, I missed that one. I had to darken that wall line where the wall, the right wall meets the floor through, through here. Okay. Let me turn these in. Going back to the vanishing point. So again, I like to abut my ruler to one edge, and so I can just run it in there. I can move my hand faster 
but it keeps the edge tight. Here I kind of just have to go back and tie this right side edge a little tighter. All right, so we're continuing to shade further using a mid-tone value here. Tighten up my box and give it light. Now you don't have, you probably don't have a toned piece of paper. Now what you could do with your forms, um, the light side, which would be the top, that would be just the white of the paper. The uh, number two part of the form, like if this was uh, over, over maybe here, one, two, three step shading, this would be just the light of the paper, this would be a lighter, darker value than that, darker than here, and this would be the darkest over here. So we'd have one, two, three step shading. Hopefully you can see that. If not, then I just wasted your time. So, oh well. Okay, so now I'll shade this area. I'll just do a diagonal underneath there. And then I'll shade this plane corresponds to that plane, which corresponds to these. And so these get a shadow tone as well. This plane here. All right, so we've got that. Okay, so now we have left, in my drawing is to add, throw a little light on the objects. So let's do that. I'll do that, I'll show you. Okay, so light source coming up here. Here's our artificial light or our sun. Diffused down a little bit, so it's putting its rays out through here. And so here's our, we'll throw a little light. I don't bash it light, just, just start to lightly put a, a little glossing tone on that. Part of this might be in shadow, it might catch just a little light through here and over. Uh, this will get some nice light on the top. So I'm thinking that the top, top of the forms of most of my objects will receive light uh, more brightly than the middle tone value, it might receive a little, just a slight little bit, but because the light source is higher, then it's going to receive more light. Now these might be more in shadow because this box is blocking a little bit, so I'll leave it alone. This might hit, have a little tone of light. So we're just playing with, playing with imagination in through here. Okay, we have this. I'll catch a nice edge in through here. Edge over through here, then I'll shade back to the vanishing point some. Maybe down through here. So this will be hotter and brighter on the top than the side. It gives you a nice sense of light. I'm just thinking about the rudiments of light for now. Here and across, maybe a highlight there, a little bit of light across the ball, ball for here. This will get a little, be a little brighter. Okay, I'll put some tone down on this box here. A little bit here. crisp edge sometimes and make it look really machined out somewhat. <coughs> and I'll put this might this top actually might be more in shadow. Maybe all that. So I'll leave just a light here. Maybe just a touch on the edge. Just to jazz it up a little bit. We're just playing with the imagination now. And we just want to give our forms a little light. So I'll go ahead and actually put just a little light on this one too as well. And in this plane I'll give a little light to our boxes. Contrast and light and form. So we learned how perspective and light and value work together to create a very strong illusion. And then lastly, I'll come over here and I'll tone this box, give it a little bit of light in this plane. Cut into that edge really strongly. And on over maybe. And out. So I'll, I'll make this area of the, the plane of the box lighter than this one because it's closer to it. So maybe this gets a little underneath light through there, a little highlight, a little brighter highlight because this ball is 
closer to us. Okay. All right. So I think that does it. Maybe a little light here. So what we've done, let's recapture, review what we did. We had a two-point, we looked at the difference between one and two-point perspective. We, we practiced that together. We put boxes in the eye, eye level, sky plane, ground plane. We uh, created a two-point interior, multiple forms, created the illusion of deep space, used foreground, middle ground, background. Hopefully you learned a lot in this particular lesson. Because it's, it's a lot of information packed into it, and we can carry that over to our next lesson, which we'll talk about ellipses and cylinders in one point, uh, maybe in two point, and then we'll also look at three point perspective and how illustrators, artists, comic book artists use three point perspective to create very dynamic, extreme viewpoints of human figures and objects. Okay, if you have any questions, email me, email your instructor. Good luck with it. Hopefully it went well, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.